You may have noticed that the, uh, the digital transformation is very much upon us. We're currently in the era of IoT. And for me, there are two big characteristics of IoT which really inform this conference. And that the first one is hyperconnectivity. The second is software-defined products and services, or to put it another way, hyper-vulnerability and hackability. So the, the title of our conference today, as you can see, is Knowing It's Safe to Connect. If you want to tweet, the hashtag is IOTSF2017. For those of you who do not know me, and there are plenty, I suspect, my name is John Moore. I'm the Managing Director of the IoT Security Foundation. And I would like to extend a very warm welcome to members and guests and those of you who have flown in from territories afar. Um, I'm especially delighted that we've got Daniel here today. I'll mention a bit more about Daniel later, but last year, Daniel tried to get here from South Korea, uh, but found himself stuck on a runway, only to be released just as we were finishing the conference. So welcome, Daniel. I want to give you just a few headlines, updates of what's been going on this year inside the foundation and a couple of announcements that we're, make, we're making today. And I wanted to start by saying that at the beginning of the year, uh, our chairman, John Hain, stepped down and we brought in a new chairman, uh, Professor Paul Doy. And with Paul uh, came the extension as we moved beyond the consumer space into the enterprise. Paul will talk a little bit more about that in his talk. But for those of you who are members, you'll know that we went through this discussion uh, uh, looking at where we should go. And we had some discussion around smart cities, but we all decided that that was a little bit nebulous and it would be difficult to apply what we're trying to do in best practice to smart cities. So we, we decided on buildings. So I'm delighted to say that in September we announced the formation of Working Group 6, which is smart buildings. Also, Working Group 5, um, we're delighted that we have uh, a piece of funded project work uh, via Petrus, uh, including partners from Warwick and the building research establishment. And fundamentally, what we're trying to do there is put an architecture together for the smart home and test it. We also transitioned Working Group 3. Um, for those of you who know about the foundation, that was originally looking at software updates, but that work got pieced into working group one in the, the framework and also into the best practice guide. And we are now repurposing working group three to look at compliance and test. And it fits very neatly with the output of working group one. I'll speak more about that in a moment, but fundamentally what we have is a requirements group and then we have a group that's looking at how you achieve compliance. Something else that we started to do this year in, in terms of our trying to propagate best practice in security, we started training. And I'm delighted to tell you that already we've delivered two sessions on training, uh, the one over the summer, uh, very well attended, and one just last week. The next date for the training, which is a foundation of IoT security, uh, is in March next year. I also want to tell you about growth in membership. I'm delighted to say that we've had 32 new members this year so far and in all likelihood we may get one or two more before the end of the year. That takes us to 104, which isn't bad going, seeing we're just over two years old. Uh, I haven't listed all the members, but I wanted to give you a flavour, so I do apologise if you have joined this year and haven't got your name up. But what I wanted to do was show you that there was a spread uh, here in the UK, uh, certainly in Scotland, Northern Ireland, uh, and here in England, but also globally. So we have members coming in from Australia and the US, uh, and also Europe too. Something else that we did this year, and we just started and we'll be doing more next year, is we held two events in the US. The US is a, a, a strategic territory, territory for us. Um, that we do have plans to grow more activity there. So I'm delighted that we held a, a seminar in Santa Clara in March and just recently in New York. And I thank Imagination Technologies and IBM for supporting those. And now on to a couple of announcements. The first one is that we are announcing an update to our compliance framework. Uh, we launched that last year, and very much we're, we're working on a, an engineering cycle, so we will be doing regular updates. Today, we are publishing 1.1. We're also publishing a companion 
questionnaire with the framework to make it easier for users to log how they're dealing with security. We've also updated the uh, Connected Consumer Best Practice Guide to include logging and software update policy. I'm delighted to tell you that we've also expanded uh, the board. Um, earlier this year, we bought on Samsung. I'm delighted that Majid Nukjiri, I think that's how you pronounce his surname, I haven't quite got used to it yet, so apologies Majid if you're watching this at some later date. Um, but Majid is the chief security architect for Samsung's Arctic uh, platform, and he's based out in the valley. Already he's attended uh, the re most recent board meeting, and he's given us some very useful insight into what he thinks needs to happen. He's very experienced in uh, standards groups. Uh, he has, he's a published author and also uh, has a number of patents to his name too. So we're delighted to welcome Majid to the board. We're also changing our strap line. So the new mantra for us and the new narrative will be build secure, buy secure, and be secure. And full credit to one of our members that we tested this out on. He said to me, you know, John, that's great. We've got three BSs. And I said to him, I said, if that helps you remember it, then I'm delighted. But what it does, it, it really gives our audience an insight into the conversations we feel we need to have. So build secure right there at the manufacturing and, and the product development stage. Buy secure, very important. We need to influence buyers. And also be secure. So once you, you have your IoT systems, you maintain them. And so just to extend that, here's my closing plea. Um, I suspect I'm preaching to the choir here, but bear with me. The first one is, is if you do provide IoT technology or products, make sure you have fit for purpose security built in. I've got a smiley face there because I think most of the guys here will know that, but that's our mantra. The second one is if you are a buyer of IoT products, please specify security before you purchase. And the third one, and I've got an unhappy face here because it is the most remedial of asks, but we're still having to do it. If you use IoT, never use default passwords. And, and in light of what we're seeing coming out of UK government at, at the moment, I should also say never share passwords, um, but also make sure you update your software on a regular basis. I've also put here, uh, we need to move beyond project fear. And, and that's the subject of the first business panel. Um, as somebody who's a, a relative new entrant into the world of uh, security, I've been doing this for three years, it occurs to me that a large part of security is sold on fear. And I think we need to move beyond that. I was asked to speak at an event here just last week, and the host introduced me by saying, John is going to tell us all about IoT security, and I'm sure he's going to scare us all. And I got up and I said, I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to make you aware so that we can address the problems. And I think that's, that's a very important message. So what we need to make sure the world understands is insecurity is not free. And I do uh, slave off the words of the great Bruce Snyder when he says that there is a security debt which is building. At some point, we will have to, to pay that debt. So let's get it right in the first place. 